Hi, dear listeners. Welcome to this new episode of my podcast, A Digital Tomorrow. I'm joined again today by Ifan He, the CEO of Red Date Technology. I actually had the pleasure of speaking with Ifan uh, over one year ago, I think it was in December 2021, where I first spoke with Ifan about um, um, China's uh, DSN, etc. And today uh, we're going to to focus a bit uh, more on, on something else, but still we're going to cover BSN as well. So um, uh, feel free to to listen to this episode and, and ask whatever questions you may have uh, after this episode on, on the comment side uh, below. Um, well, um, welcome, Ifan, to, to this episode. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here second time. The pleasure is mine. And, and before proceeding, uh, well, happy Lunar New Year. Kukhei Fachoi. Thank you. And well, um, I'm going to start uh, talking about um, UDPN. I know you've been busy uh, lately and it was all over the media uh, last week, uh, especially for those of us who are involved or follow the, this world of uh, CBDCs, uh, blockchain. And I know that um, in Davos, in Switzerland, it was announced that the uh, UDPN, Universal, Universal sorry, Digital Payments Network, was uh, launched. And I wanted to ask you if you could please explain or, uh, or let my listeners know what UDPN is and also uh, how are you and your company involved in that? Okay. Uh, first, uh, uh, UDPN is just like BSN, it's an infrastructure. So, so, so you know, I, I talk to people all the time. It's really hard every single time. It's really hard for me to explain an infrastructure because, you know, end user you really don't see it. like internet you know you you know internet but uh, you know most people never even use the internet directly they are using application built on the internet so so it's really hard to explain this uh, but the udpn uh, uh, first it's uh, uh, we consider U udpn will be a major uh, financial infrastructure global financial in infrastructure uh, 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 in the future, not for today. Okay, UDP it's 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 like uh, personally, I think three years earlier than it's supposed to exist. <laughs> so it's it's a, a little bit early. Uh, but the purpose of UDP is because we expect in ten years most of the money will become digital. Okay, e money. Uh, so which means it will in fact almost everything. Uh, you know, that involves money, you know, like a banking, like a business, like a payments, like, a, you know, transactions, you know, even credit cards, uh, you know, almost everything will be infected. So uh, that's why it's uh, we begin to think about uh, what will happen, you know, in the banking, in the business, in the retail, what will happen if all, uh, most money become e-money? then you realize all the IT systems need to be upgraded, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, for that kind of major upgrade, probably will take like 10 years to 20 years. And, and how you can help that kind of transform formation, you know, from the regular money to the, you know, next generation of currencies. Then we say, okay, you really, what's the purpose of the infrastructure? It's to you know make sure nobody to build the same same thing again and again and again. You build a one infrastructure, everybody use it. Then you know they basically save a lot of time, money, and uh, increase the efficiency. That's it. That's <laughs> the whole purpose of UDPN. So UDPN, we try to use one sentence very simply to explain UDPN is we try to build the infrastructure to connect three things. <laughs> Okay, digital currencies, which means this infrastructure will connect to all the future uh, uh, digital currency IT system because digital currency definitely will be within some IT system. So uh, this infrastructure will, will connect to as many digital currency system as possible. Uh, the digital currency means payment related and regulated digital currency like uh, some regulated stable coins in the future and the central bank digital currency in the future so there's no 
security like a cryptocurrency involved. Okay, mm -hmm. we don't touch that. Okay, it's only for the payment related digital currency. So that's one type of system we want to plug into. Second one is the commercial banks or all the financial institutions. Because we, we, you know, some people say with digital currency, all the commercial bank will be gone. It won't happen, okay? Because commercial bank, the purpose of commercial bank is to provide services. Okay, central bank won't provide direct services to business and the individual. So commercial bank, they will exist and they will still play a very important role in the financial industry in the future. So we also... Uh, uh, you know, give uh, give uh, give the gateways and APIs for commercial bank very easily to also plug into UDP. And the third type of bin, uh, IT system is all other business IT systems. So, 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 uh, for example, you can be a, a e-commerce website, you can be a high school students project. So as long as your IT systems want to you know, process digital currency or process some services from a commercial bank, we link everybody together. So it's, it's the digital currency systems, commercial bank or financial institutions systems and the regular business and the individual IT systems. Everybody can plug into UDPN and become, a, you know, network big network to basically, you know, for example, the e-commerce website can access any digital currency in the world, allow their customer to pay with that digital currency. Then any bank, they can associate with their banking account with all the digital currency wallets, you know, then they don't need to build a connection to each different, uh, you know, uh, uh, digital currency system, you know, if there's like 2,000, they need to build like 2,000 times, it, it won't happen. It definitely, there will be infrastructure you plug in and you immediately have access to all the digital currencies. And also it helps central bank digital currency. Remember, it's a di digital currency. It's not a paper money. For paper money, if you want to circulate Paper money actually is easier. You can put them into bag and and, and <laughs> take the bag to another country. You know you can spend it immediately. You know it begin to circulate. But for digital currency, if you want to circulate a digital currency, you need digital infrastructures. So, which for example, if there's a country they issue a central bank digital currency, how other how the business and the individuals and the commercial banks use there this country's uh, central bank digital currency from another country or another continent how they even use that because there's no infrastructure in there in the bank's country then you need a global infrastructure so udp one purpose is also help central bank digital currency to circulate globally okay so basically if you know to sum up it's basically UDP is a connecting, you know, digital currency system, connecting financial institution system and the business IT system. And we help central bank to circulate, easier to circulate the, their uh, uh, digital currency globally. And we help any business IT system to integrate any regulated digital currency easily or efficiently. And we also help commercial bank to connect to any digital currency system in the world easily and uh, cheaply and also can offer the digital currency related services back to those IT spinners who also plug into UDP. So that's the big picture. So it's a it's very, very massive, massive project. So that's why you know, we, we know it's it's very early, three years, two years ago, it was like five years earlier than it's supposed to exist. So, but we think because this is too, too big project, too massive, we, we, we need to, you know, begin the process and, and begin to work with multiple parties. This project will be built probably in next two years, probably will be dozens of major companies involved to build this together. It's not like one company can build the whole thing. So that's uh, that's basically, you know, uh, uh, what UDP is. Uh, but uh, Red Day is one of the contributors 
uh, to uh, uh, build the the uh, uh, you know uh, uh, European uh, uh, and I want to emphasize it's uh, European has nothing to do with BSN. So it's basically totally separated two project. It's ready because we are really good at uh, you know this kind of decentralized uh, technologies and also you know the infrastructure level design and the implementation. So that's why we you know we involved in the both project. But uh, the, 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 there's no relationship between uh, UDP and the BSN. And also UDP is a global effort. Ready is the only Chinese background company involved. So also UDP has nothing to do with China. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's a it's a group of effort. So so we are working with uh, like GFT from Europe, from Germany, right? The, then the Toco from US, and uh, and uh, you know we also have a, 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 a you know personally I think uh, you know a dozen uh, financial institutions also involved in different stage and the different contributions you know uh, so uh, some uh, 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 some uh, financial institutions they don't really uh, get involved to build udp but we have uh, regular phone uh, you know conference calls and then we discuss get feedback from them and then to make the design better you know to fit in so so there's uh, uh, many people involved uh, in past two years so that's uh, basically how Red Day is involved in this project. This is a global effort. Hmm. I was actually precisely going to ask you this, whether uh, BSN was related to UDPN, but you already solved uh, that doubt. And well, I think you mentioned uh, many interesting things and you helped clarify what UDPN is. Um, I think it's very interesting what you said as well about going ahead of your time, because when it comes to CBDCs, we are uh, most of the time talking that uh, we are still like on this phase one where most countries are actually still studying whether to launch or not their own CBDC, or even if they did launch it like China with the digital yuan, they are still in a very initial stage. So uh, seeing this kind of project that involves or has been labeled by some as a, a kind of swift you know, to connect stable coins and, and, and CBDCs, this platform that you told me now, which is UDPN, uh, well, that's actually groundbreaking you know, because it seems like, as you said before, a project that has been launched like uh, ahead of its time. You no, know? I mean, there's nothing like that. So it's been very interesting to hear from you about that. Uh, some more ideas as well that I wanted to to emphasize were what you, what you said before about uh, commercial banks. You now the idea that um, central banks cannot, of course, um, replace the role of commercial banks because the roles are different and are going to be different even in a CBDC um, world. And, and then the idea as well, I liked it a lot that you said about e-money becoming like so massively used in a few years from now. I think that's actually the key, you know, the key, the key to this whole point is precisely this idea that e-money will become much more massively used than it is even uh, nowadays. Yeah, and uh, many people say, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, why you guys build something so early, because when it's too early, you don't make money, right? Because the market is not there yet. Uh, the reason is we really, really think digital currency will change everything in the business world. Okay, it's so important. And right now, most projects are on paper. And and personally, I I don't think any central bank really clearly 100% know what will happen with central bank digital currency in the business, different business scenarios. For example, even, I mean, you know, even many people say, okay, the, the, the central bank digital currency will be issued on Ethereum. <laughs> you know, it, it won't happen. I, I can tell you today, it won't happen. Okay. For any, you know, any country with 10 million people, it won't happen. So, so which means, you know, no people really understand, including us, Nobody really know what will happen in the future, and uh, and uh, personally, I think uh, right now the knowledge base grow too slow, because why? Because everybody talk and put on the paper. Nobody build anything. You need to build, you know, stuff and experiment. Uh, you know, do a lot of testing experiments on real infrastructure and to understand 
how those business scenarios can be implemented and how digital currency involved, how to put a regulation on that, what's the risk, what's the security, how you do KYCs, how, you know, very simple one. It's, a, you know, for central bank digital currency, if I ask, for example, if there's 10 central bank, central bank, you know, uh, you know, CIOs in front of me, I ask, okay, do you think the central bank will hold the, the individual wallets? Mm -hmm. I, I tell you, there will be totally different answers from those 10 central banks. Okay. Just think about that. For a central bank digital currency system, there's right now, there, uh, trust me, there will be two models, okay, in the future. One model is uh, they hold everybody's wallet okay the, mm -hmm. basically they the, because all the central bank digital currency will be kyc based i don't think any central bank will allow 1 million anonymous transfers okay so it's uh, everything's KYC. then they need to manage those kyc verified wallets so do they manage those wallets second second matter is they don't manage individual wallets Okay, they only manage commercial banks' wallets. Then each commercial bank gave individual wallets. Then central bank become, you know, just do wholesale settlement. Then each commercial bank manage individual settlements with merchants and, uh, you know, since and, and the central bank will just do the settlement between banks. All the central bank holds the, in, the individual wallets manage individual wallets through commercial bank then commercial bank they don't you know they don't own those wallets but they manage with permission from central bank so so just this one question i think i think i think central banks will discuss this in the next five years <laughs> with no action and and we build the odp in the next six months we will test both scenarios you know, if if you know we are talking with uh, multiple central banks, if we can working with some central bank to run some proof of concept projects to test those models, it's fun. If not, we will create our own, you know, fake central bank digital currency system and still test those models in the next say six months. Then we will issue, uh, you know, reports. We will issue designs. You know, just tell people. What's the difference? You know, if you go this way, this is what you need to worry about. You know, for, for example, let me see how to process KYC information. Those two models are totally different. You know, one is actually the central bank needed to verify. Even the commercial bank collect the KYC information, the central bank still needed to verify, right? And at least they needed to have a standard to verify with the commercial bank. Then the second model is the central bank doesn't need to know the KYCs of the individual, just like today's banking system, right? Central bank have no idea. So each commercial bank manages their KYC process. Then what's the standard? What's the requirement? You know, how then based on those KYC information, if if, if central bank owns uh, have access to those KYC, you know, some people begin to worry about the privacy because it's government, right? It's, it's authority. Then, you know, it's, but it's much easier for the bank to verify to each other because central bank has all the KYCs. If it's the individual bank holds their own KYC, then how you verify between banks? <laughs> so, so there's, yeah. you know, just, just for, for a very tiny aspect, it, it involves so many things. That's why we are working with you know multiple banks and hopefully working with central bank to test those on UDP and sandbox. You know to to especially also how much money involved. You know which means if the central bank we need the issue like uh, you know uh, uh, one hundred million wallets, how much money it will it will cost the commercial bank. You know to even manage that for the central bank then that cost will in fact the business model of the commercial bank <laughs> you know how they make money 
you know, how they can break even because this is, you know, commercial bank is a business. They don't do, you know, charity work for central bank, just for central bank to circulate the money. It's, it's cost involved. They need to is redesign the business model. So, so, so there's so much involved. That's why, you know, uh, uh, very luckily we are working with multiple parties who want to invest. Right now, it's not really put in money into, you know, just hope for a quick return. Actually, to build things to basically probably in the next two years, we need to basically run different tests to understand those things. And and uh, that's why UDP, you know, it's it's early, but uh, in the next two years, we probably can even define some standards, mm -hmm. you know, how, you know, how, you know, how many types of central bank digital currency, stable coin, and, and how KYC works, what's the regulation, everything. You know, we're also working with uh, Toco. It's uh, basically a law firm, right? We, we we hope also we can give some suggestions and, and some, you know, discuss research paper issued just to you know how the regulation works in the future. You know, and, and also another very, very important thing, like I said, how you circulate a central bank zero currency outside your country. Just think about that. No, I mean, it's, it's indeed, um, sorry, sorry, please go, okay. Yeah, so, so uh, is that the, the uh, you know, will the other country allow this country's central bank access their citizens' KYC information? You know, if they open accounts. So, so all those questions need to be asked in the next three to five years, otherwise, digital currency won't be able to circulate globally. Okay, if, if a digital currency, any central bank digital currency or stable coin uh, won't be circulated globally, it means nothing. Mm -hmm. It's it basically a membership point. <laughs> no, I, I think everything you said now, it's very interesting and especially you know, this idea of uh, allowing digital currencies to circulate uh, globally, I think that's very important because if we see each country coming up with a CBDC in the future, a retail CBDC, but there is no uh, interoperability, no, no, no possibility to to allow regulated several coins CBDC to circulate globally. Then I think that um, the whole thing will not be um, complete. And I think it's interesting as well what you mentioned that you know, despite uh, going ahead of your time, this will also help uh, practitioners and everyone involved in the industry. You know, because I feel like it's nice sometimes to read many reports on um, what the architecture for CBDC should be or how KYC should be tackled, this and that. But then at the end of the day, seeing a project like yours, uh, Sandboxes, other projects like, I don't know, MCBDC Bridge, whatever, uh, these kind of, of practical things allow uh, other special, you know, central banks, commercial banks to know uh, what to do, how to do it, you know, because it, it shouldn't be just based on a, on a paper or report. It should be on like a yes, practical yes. thing. And I think in that sense, UDPN, based on what you told me, can provide like a very clear and practical guidance. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, and in the next six months, we are working with multiple banks on 10 user cases, you know. Uh, and uh, 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 if anyone is interested, can go to the UDPN.io website to, to, to basically go through those 10 uh, POC user cases. If you see the 10 user cases, it's it's. Uh, it involves commercial bank, it involves business, it involves central bank, you know, different scenarios, you know, uh, how, how to verify, uh, you know, cross commercial bank to verify, you know, KYCs and also link back to travel rule, you know, how to uh, implement travel rule on anonymous stable coins, you know. So, 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 so all those things, we actually will test the 10 user cases next six months. So, and all those, uh, you know, user cases after we implement them, you know, with GFT and with, uh, you know, some banks, we actually will build them into the sandbox. So, which means, you know, when we when we release one POC, you know, the final, you know, uh, uh, product, you know, people actually can log into the sandbox and the test it, you know, with the user interface, for example, how you, you know, link your bank account with different wallets. You know, you 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 can actually do that 
on the sandbox. You know, you know, there there will be a page like a banking, you know, uh, account summary page. You can select your bank account. You know, you know, today you can link with you, you can have sub accounts with USD, right? With Hong Kong dollar, with different currency. In the future, it probably, you know, grow to two two hundred, you know, digital currency with probably one day with USDC. You know, if it's uh, continue to be regulated, USDC, you can actually open USDC wallets on the banking page and the linking with your bank account. Mm -hmm. So, so it's a very small, very small action, but uh, you need uh, we, you know, we, we will implement those. So, so uh, I think two years from now on, you know, if anyone goes to the UDP and sandbox, you can actually see more than 10, 15 different user cases, different business scenarios. You can test how UDP, you know. Uh, how uh, digital currency works in in that specific business scenario. Then uh, also we will issue some uh, paper for each user case. You know how why we design. What's the what, what's the rationale behind the design? How you know uh, what what kind of data we tested? You know, uh, for example, for 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 this kind of design. You know what's the TPS? You know transaction per second. You know. So it's a, it's a, uh, you know what's a security concern, and even we will give some suggestions on regulations, you know, for to control risks, you know, potentially, you know how. So 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 uh, uh, anyway, you know what, what I want to say is this is a massive massive project. That, that's why you know uh, for 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 all the effort we always say if anyone is interested. No, don't worry about it. You must be a bank or you must be a large tech company. No, if you are, a, you know, a college students, if you are interested, reach out to us. You know, you know. For example, you can involve in testing. You know, help us to test the whole thing, right? So, so uh, please, we need people. We need the participants into this effort. Okay, otherwise, you know, just a dozen companies is not enough. Mm -hmm. I know indeed I was checking actually your uh, website the other day and I was checking the use cases and I could see they are quite diverse I mean you could see from KYC to um, um, payment gateways for e-commerce so I mean there are definitely many many things that I'm sure you will uh, test and then produce a report uh, eventually as you just uh, uh, told me and well um, we'll talk more about DCP and I'm sure in the in the near future uh, but before wrapping up this episode, I wanted to ask you uh, about the topic that we covered uh, last year in my previous uh, episode, which was uh, the BSN, uh, the Blockchain Service Network, which, as, as you said before, it's not related to UDPN. Mm -hmm. But still, given that you were um, a very active part of uh, BSN, I wanted to ask you, um, well, first of all, whether there have been any updates since last time we spoke uh, uh, last year, um, what, what news do you have about BSN, etc.? Okay, so uh, basically, the uh, you know the uh, BSN is a, a, a I mean uh, last year uh, twenty twenty two is a big year for BSN. You know we we finalized our vision. We 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 build uh, now we have a clear structure of our you know bsn technology stack so and and also we uh, you know launched everything we designed four years ago so so last year is a big year big year for for bsn so from this year it's we will focus on promoting them okay not building so so by end of 20 22 the building the the majority of the building and the creating it's finished, it's complete. Okay, from this year, we begin to more like a business side promoting that. So uh, uh, UDP is a targeting payment related, digital currency related infrastructure. Uh, BSN is, uh, is the industry and the application agnostic. Okay, but uh, what BSN is, we give them a new industry. Okay, this is actually, we. <laughs> First, uh, BSN is uh, in the cloud business. Okay, it's a cloud, but we call them the decentralized cloud services or decentralized cloud infrastructure. 
So, so which means we think the traditional cloud is uh, basically serving private IT systems. You know, you build your own website on the Amazon, you know, Google, then, you know, you set up your database, you, you, you program your, your application, you know, upload to AWS and, and run that as a private IT system. Uh, like uh, 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 like our vision is, we think there will be a second type of IT system in the future called uh, public IT system or shared IT system or decentralized IT system, right? But uh, 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 this kind of this kind of public IT system is totally different from a private IT system because it's multi-party applications, and uh, which means you need. Uh, you know, uh, for uh, for the private IT system, you probably need uh, you know one or two virtual machines in the cloud and set up everything. You know, then run by yourself. You control everything. But the public IT system, or decentralized IT system, or shared IT system, or someone called multi-party IT system, uh, uh, they actually run on different virtual machines, and those uh, virtual machines could. Uh, could be on different cloud or different hardware, and but but uh, it could be like uh, you know one hundred thousand different virtual machines and running same application. This actually calls everything to become different from the traditional cloud infrastructure because you need uh, you know to to build connections with different cloud different. Uh, uh, you know, virtual machines and 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 deploy the same application on all of them and and make sure they connect to each other. So we think from the communication protocol, there will be new communication protocol. Okay, broadcasting protocol, no longer HTTP. Okay, and there will be new database technology because I don't think for this kind of decentralized application, everybody install Oracle <laughs> or same database. You know, it's it's there will be a new database technology and the operating different operating system because for private IT system it's there's uh, you know the Unix based the Linux based and the Windows based operating system right. Blockchain are the decentralized operating system. So 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 uh, which means uh, on the decentralized cloud services there will be different. Uh, Operating system, you say different the communication protocol, different the operating system, different the database technology. Then you need a different the cloud. <laughs> That's what BSN is working on, building next generation decentralized cloud infrastructure. So 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 we we treat blockchain technology as a one type of early type of operating system for decentralized clouds. Mm -hmm. So that's why we don't care about the permission, the permissionless, permissionless is just different permissions, right? We we integrate them and, and when you use when you build your you know decentralized application, you can on BSN, you know, choose whatever operating system you want and choose any cloud you want, and you can build your own data center and 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 working with your partner or your customers' data center. To build a decentralized application as become part of your overall IT infrastructure, uh, IT uh, you know a uh, uh, system within a company. So 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 it's it's uh, you know uh, as uh, as I uh, emphasize all the time, it's uh, we don't touch cryptocurrency. Okay, mm -hmm. it's it's uh, you know personally I don't like it and we we don't touch it. So BSN is a is a cloud services. Decentralized cloud services. We serve all the industries, all the businesses. We don't care as long as you run your business legally. Okay, in 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 the region you are in. So so that's basically uh, BSN is. So we uh, uh, we have our you know technology stack. We have a uh, two major categories called uh, private BSN or BSN enterprise BSN. Uh, this is a uh, enterprise software. You can install into any traditional data center and convert part of part of the cloud resources into a new new environment. You know to handle decentralized uh, operating system and the databases. So uh, uh, that's an enterprise software. So how for any kind of you know this kind of traditional cloud or traditional data center 
to be able to handle future decentralized environments. Okay, then we have a second uh, category called the public BSN. It's uh, basically inside China called the BSN DTC network, outside China called the BSN Spartan network. So th those are public uh you know uh, infrastructure which means it's uh, it's like public cloud right it's 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 already built the operating system already built you don't need to build anything by yourself but you can set up a spartan or bsn spartan data center you know you own the local software everything and plug that data center virtual data center into onto a spartan network then you can begin to build any kind of the decentralized uh, application you know, based on the average team system you choose. So, 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 uh, so basically, right now we have, uh, you know, what we tried to do. So, uh, uh, basically, by end of last year, we have, uh, you know, we finished everything we planned. So, mm -hmm. so, so, uh, yeah. So, with the uh, enterprise BSN, with two public BSN, one in China, one globally. So, so right now everything's here. So, but we. We will uh, uh, upgrade all the software uh, quarterly. So, so basically, we will continue to uh, to develop BSN, and also we are working with uh, multiple multiple companies try to improve the blockchain technology. You know, because the blockchain is basically is built to 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 issue and trade cryptocurrencies. So it's not really, you know, fit into you know, different other business scenarios and IT scenarios. So we try to, you know, improve them. Uh, personal, I think after three years, you know, blockchain technology, you know, won't be even called blockchain anymore, <laughs> you know, because the black, blocks and the chain, you know, lecture, you know, it's a it's very, very limited data, data structure, you know, it, you know, they will slowly, you know, to, to change to something much, much more flexible. Mm -hmm. No, I think it, it's very interesting what you told me now about the updates regarding uh, BSN. And I also think that, uh, well, I always found that China's approach to, to this topic uh, quite unique because, um, I mean, we all know that cryptocurrencies are banned in mainland China, but at the same time, China is a very blockchain friendly country. I mean, we also saw President Xi backing, I think it was in 2019, backing blockchain technology and actually encouraging uh, companies to seize the opportunities offered by blockchain. Mm -hmm. So I think what you're building is it's actually quite unique in that sense now because uh, people tend to think of blockchain equal to cryptocurrencies i know it's much it's very different yeah. from that because i mean even i myself i'm an advocate for for a blockchain uses in banking non-cryptocurrency related uh, blockchain use cases because i think there are a lot you, know, you can use it in, in general banking islamic banking and finance uh, but still i think that china's approach not, not just to blockchain in general but also to, to the metaverse to nfts is actually quite quite unique because it shows a different approach to that which excludes cryptocurrencies, but it shows it's possible as well. And it's not, it's not that common, but that it's, it's different. Yeah, uh, uh, because, uh, because China really understands technology. Uh, because, uh, you know, the, the first thing, like you said, we need to make sure, understand the difference between pure technology or application built with that technology. So, so those two things are totally different. And usually the regulation is always on application. You know, for example, you're making steel. You know, if you use the steel to build a car, it's totally fine. But if you use the steel in China to build a gun, it's totally illegal. So the application is a problem. But the pure steel making technology, it's definitely, you know, encouraged by, you know, uh, all the governments, but 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 outside China, because you know, in most uh, country, most region, people can still do cryptocurrency, so it's kind of confusing, you know, because the crypto people always confuse everybody with you know the the currencies, the blockchain, the NFT, the digital cryptocurrency, everything messed together, you know, because what they need to do is promoting cryptocurrency, <laughs> so they basically try to you know just com confuse everybody. But uh, I, I I think as long as you understand what's technology, what's uh, application, then everything become much more clear. Mm. No, no, indeed, indeed, I, I fully agree with you. Uh, but still, no, I mean, it's mm. I think it's quite um, well a different or unique case. Um, 
uh, because it's what you said, you know, people tend to think of the applications and whenever you mention blockchain, even if you are going to talk about non-crypto related cases, people tend to think of cryptocurrencies automatically. So I think that um, what China is uh, developing based on the technology and not just on that application is actually well, very interesting and, and different. No, I know that China is very active as well on, on the metaverse, to the point that uh, some local governments are stepping into this area very actively. And I know that to some people it may sound strange a metaverse without, for example, uh, cryptocurrencies, but at the same time, the metaverse is much more than that. No, I mean, it includes a virtual reality, augmented reality. So I think it's, of course, perfectly possible, even though it may seem strange to some. Yeah, uh, uh, metaverse is uh, totally another story. Okay, yeah, metaverse yeah. basically, yeah, uh, for, uh, for, from our understanding, meta, uh, so called metaverse is basically another form of websites. Mm -hmm. You know, right now it's a 2D, it's, 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 it's on your screen, you know, with the pictures, the videos, everything. It, it will change in other much 3D, you know, uh, virtual reality kind of gaming kind of, you know, environment. So when you serve, the uh, internet no longer is uh, through browser. It's uh, through some 3D environments. So uh, uh, that's metaverse. But uh, but uh, how blockchain can be used in in uh, in metaverse is basically the inter uh, interoperability because blockchain technology always is a multi-party you know application. So you can link different uh, you know uh, uh, metaverse together so people can interact. For example. You know, the users from this world can visiting another world, you know, through blockchain technology. So the, uh, that's just one piece of what uh, actually very one small piece in the metaverse. So and and the Web3, I, I never talk about the Web3 because, uh, you know, it's uh, it's uh, basically a cryptocurrency marketing mm -hmm. term. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, yeah. so I don't so so it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, Web3 will replace Web2, you know, but but our uh, uh, you know, the term we are using is public IT system. So we think, you know, public IT system will be parallel with private IT system. It's like your home and a park, right? You still do most of your daily activities at home. But if you want to share something, make something more transparent, you go to park. So they will coexist, you know, uh, and whatever business, you know, requirement and the scenario you want to achieve, you know, pick any technology you think is best, no longer, you know, no matter if it's a web three, web two, public IT system, or private IT system, I don't care about the name, just use the technology you, you see best fit into your business scenarios and the requirements. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Actually, when, when the term web three was invented, no, by the way, that early made reference to a semantic web, but now uh, it makes reference to this uh, internet, no, um, where cryptos interact and uh, full of DAOs. And well, um, while some people see it as a natural evolution of Web2, I'm not so sure about that. Of course, that Web3 can have like a potential in certain countries, uh, of course. But uh, I mean, I don't think it's a natural evolution per se, because it involves that you need to embrace cryptocurrencies, DAOs, et cetera, et cetera. It's not just about the technology, you know, it's also about the application. So that's why, well, I don't think it's a natural evolution. It can be an evolution in certain circumstances in countries. But I don't think it's per se like the natural evolution, like everywhere. Yeah, uh, it's it, it's still my question. If we talk about Web three, can someone explain to me what Web three is? It's a technology or application. So 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 it's nobody can you know when people talk about Web three, eventually it's always value transfer. When, when you mention value transfer, it's a cryptocurrency. Okay, so stop. It's an application. Well, it's cryptos, and, uh, DAOs. I mean, yeah, that, yeah. It's, it's the application. It's not the technology per se. It's the application. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. what we call is the decentralized technology of public IT systems, and and it will always co coexist with private IT systems. Mm -hmm. you know, just two, uh, two, two type of technology. You know, you can take whatever you want, and you can even combine them. So, so I personally, I think in. In ten years, you will see most uh, IT systems. You know, probably eighty percent of the de data and and the processing will be still within private systems. But the uh, twenty percent of the data and uh, you know the processing will be built into a public IT system. You know, to share with your partners, your business 
partners, with governments, with uh, you know your customers, you know just make everything more transparent. You know they can hold data more directly. So there's a benefit. So so it's it's a combination of you know the different uh, technology. So what BSA is, let me emphasize here is uh, what BSA is is to build the infrastructure, the cloud services infrastructure to serving the twenty percent of the public IT systems in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, well, thank you very much for, for sharing the latest updates about uh, BSN. And unfortunately, now we need to, to wrap up this episode, but I'm sure my listeners will have learned a lot from you about uh, UDPN, which is, as you said, a groundbreaking project, and also about the latest updates of uh, BSN, and well, in general about everything that you said, which has all been uh, very interesting. And I would like to thank you, Yifan, for, for accepting my invite. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me here. <laughs> it's been my pleasure, and I'm looking forward to speaking with you again in the, in the near future, because I'm sure that uh, you will have like lots of updates from, from all these uh, projects and, and areas. Thank you. And well, to all my listeners, uh, thank you very much for listening to this episode, and please stay tuned for the next ones. See you soon.